Okay, so I went in, um, I blended everything, I touched everything up a little bit more, um, and I also went in with powders just to touch some things up, um, just because I feel like after I set makeup, it does kind of like dull it a little bit. Um, and I do think that I still did it like a little bit too subtly, so that is why I went in. Um, and I did go and add just like a little bit in some areas with powders. I actually used something a little bit purpley. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell, but that kind of helped cool it down in the spots that I thought were like a little bit too red. Um, so obviously like looking up close, it is still very intense. It is a lot. Um, but I still like to go in and like add some more detail to it at this point because sometimes I do feel like if there are places where I'm like, oh, that's like a little bit too heavy or like I'm not happy with how that looks. Um, I found that if you go in with like the little stipple sponges um, and either I usually use like the fine pour one if I'm just doing like smaller details, but the coarse one would work too. Um, and you just go in with like a little bit of like a light red color. This is actually like a color corrector color. Um, I don't like to use a lot of like brighter reds because sometimes I think they read like orangey so I usually go for like a cooler red um, and you can add like a little bit of redness here um, and sometimes I'll just like stipple over um, any wrinkles that I think are too much. I set my face first um, just because I didn't want it to all blend together. I don't always do that when I'm stippling um, but it just kind of depends on like how much makeup I'm wearing and if I felt like my skin was a little too oily which I was getting to that point um, I wanted to make sure that um, it didn't all just blur together. I will also sometimes take somebody's foundation and go over any areas that I think are too much. Um, but you do have to remember this is not meant to be seen um, really up close. It would be seen from like many, many feet away. Whereas like something like this, I'd probably just look tired. Um, but like this, they would definitely get the point that it's some sort of like old age character. Um, but if there is anywhere where you feel like, oh, like I want to add a little bit more, um, you can do that. So I'm going to add um, a little bit of redness in here. Um, a lot of times people will do that on the nose um, but again if there's anywhere that I feel like I kind of just like want to break it up um, I will actually do that so you don't want to get too crazy so sometimes with stippling you can do too much color with it so a lot of times like I work with like my palette paper if you're working with like a palette I'll pick up this color and then I'll kind of like wipe it down a little bit because um, a lot of times it picks up way too much um, so anywhere where you think like oh that's maybe a little too much um, you can just go in and kind of like break it up a little bit and I think um for a larger distance it's not always going to be like the most effective thing in the world but I do think like when you're up close it can add um like a lot uh it is definitely not my most attractive moment I feel like right now but uh I think that this at least kind of like gives you an idea of like what the opera um style makeup is um Hopefully this kind of makes sense. Again, like this could be the point where like if you wanted to um, add in any extra touches you could, like I went in um, and I added a little bit of the stippling. Um, if there's anywhere where you feel like, oh, like maybe it got like a little bit too dark. Okay, like I still have some of my like highlight color. So I can just kind of like throw that over it. And um, when you're farther away like this, the stippling can be a little bit crazier <laughs> just because like from a distance, that's not necessarily gonna like read as oddly as it might if somebody is like really up close to me um it might look a little bit off um but you can go in and like certainly like lighten things up this way um this is also how I like to add in um a lot of like age spots and stuff sometimes too so I'll sometimes I'll come in and that's when I, I try to like pinch it so it's like a little bit more precise um and I'll take like the darker color and that's a good way to sort of like add in um, those spots because sometimes I think with those if you try too hard um, with a brush to make it perfect um, it just comes out looking a little bit a little bit off and remember if you're going to be at a greater distance um, you need things like that to be seen so up close like yeah that's a little bit that's a little bit crazy um, but overall um, that is going to give you kind of like a more even sort of a look to it and again so that's a cream um, so we are going to need to go back um, and set that um and then you don't want to forget about your lips so I didn't go in and do tons of detail work on my lips um usually I'll at least like lighten them on somebody so sometimes people will just take like their foundation um and kind of go across their lip with it um sometimes people will draw in lines I like to do that with like pencils if I'm going to do that um but I just kind of did like a little bit of shading because a lot of times if somebody has to like eat or drink or something on stage um you don't see a lot of like the lines that you draw in or if you make somebody's lips too light they're not going to have lips anymore <laughs> so especially like for the opera people are singing like they still need to have um a mouth right so you don't want to like take it away too much um but we'll put like a little bit of color on there um and then I'm also going to go ahead um and we'll add a little blush to it too um if you were going to do any kind of hair white I would want to do that at this point too 
Um, I like to use water activated paints for that or like the liquid hair whites. Um, if you use the aerosols, um, which in an opera you might not be using tons of aerosols just with like everybody needing to kind of like protect their voice. Um, but if that is the case, I like to spray it onto like a comb or a brush or like a toothbrush and then comb it through the hair. Um, but I have used cream makeup in a pinch. I think for small areas like eyebrows, it's okay. Putting it into like somebody's full beard or something, the cream can get really stuck into the hair. Um, so you don't necessarily want to do that just because it might be with somebody um, for much longer than they would like, right? Um, so I prefer to use something that's like water activated again. I think that removes the most easily. I have had somebody sweat it out of their hair before, um, but they were in a very heavy costume and it was pretty warm where they were at. Um, so it made a little bit more sense. I have not had trouble with it otherwise, and especially if you're just doing like small streaks or something, or like certainly like eyebrows, eyelashes, um, it should be fine. Um, for eyelashes or even like smaller like facial hair and stuff, if you have like a white mascara or um, a like mascara like lash primer, um, that could work really nicely for that. Um, otherwise, um, I think the water activated is a little bit better than getting like a cream really close unless it's like a cream eyeliner um, That's appropriate to be used on the lashes then that would be okay um, But just really be really careful with anything that's like too liquidy um, Near someone's lashes just because you don't want to get it in their eye. You don't want to get it on contacts um, You don't want to do anything that would um, hurt anybody um, So I'm gonna go in uh, do the last couple finishing touches um, And then we will conclude all of this